under there? No. Sure? Do you see something? I don't see anything. In the trash can. This is a rattlesnake. My first one. We'll flip him into there to make it a little bit easier. This spot is really bad to work with him. Zach's doing his best to get him out. Got away. I'm in New Orleans looking for the timber rattlesnake. This is one of the deadliest animals in North America, and if I want to be a wildlife expert one day, I need to be able to work with animals just like this. Today, I'm working with Zachary Gray as he teaches me to catch snakes in southern Louisiana. If you want to come along for the journey, tune in every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, and we'll discover the natural world together. And today's target is no joke. We are going to be going out for a canebrake rattlesnake today. Now, canebrake rattlesnake, species that I'm very used to dealing with. Spencer's actually never seen one before, and hopefully we can get him a really, really big one. That's That'd be place. insane. We already missed a small canebrake this morning. I mean, I'm, I'm disappointed. Uh, I'm a little bummed, but you know, Zach tells me that these guys are everywhere, and that was a small one. If I'm if I'm gonna get a rattlesnake, I want to go big or go home. So I, I'd really, I'd really like to get a bigger one. He says there's tons of them. There's plenty of spots from the bee, so it should be pretty easy to find one, right? Right? Is it? Yeah. Oh, that is, that is, yeah, it is cane break skin. Be aware of the, uh, like, it's probably nearby. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Well, that means they're out. That's a good sign. You know, there's signs of snakes everywhere, not just the rattlesnake skins. You know, we're, we're, we're hearing racers dart into the little brush. You know, there's lots of animals that are prime prey items for a lot of big snakes, like, you know, rat snakes. And Zach says there's hog noses in here too. The thing is, the habitat is just really difficult to get through. Between that and the heat and just, you know, constantly keeping an eye out for moccasins, this is, this is a really difficult search here. There's times I'm literally like, I feel like Zach's being really patient with me because my sheer lack of experience with these kinds of snakes, with this kind of habitat and just trying to stay out of his way and stay in a safe direction and distance from the cover that we're flipping while also doing all this in such close quarters, like I'm hunched over half in a bunch of like bamboo and other plants as we're flipping over some of these mattresses. Like there's not a lot of wiggle room. And if a snake was there and decided to come out in my direction, I'd be screwed. Uh, I didn't realize how hard learning to properly catch snakes is gonna be, but Zach is definitely, definitely showing me that I have a lot to learn. What'd you see? Same one? Yep. Black mass racer. Very quick snake. Cannot go slow to get these guys. Ow! And they are mean. Have a look at that snake. Black mass racers look very similar to blues. Ah, nice yellow belly there. Very pretty. This is pretty ra the prettiest racer we have here, I think. With the holding. Can't get very quick racer. I find them to be much more aware and quick than black racers, especially this time of day. Very common species here. Whew, he is quick. Nice looking snake. Very nice looking racer. I could not have asked for a better guide. This guy knows his snakes and he knows the area. First spot was a bust, but this next spot, whether we find a cane break or not, is probably one of the most bizarre habitats I've ever seen. It's getting late, it's getting hot. Um, I can just feel the fatigue seeping in from all the hiking and just wandering around. This has probably been the most difficult search of my life. And it's starting to dawn on me that that little cane break we found may have been the only one that we were gonna get. Just gotta be patient and hope for the best, I guess. All right, we got a snake, we got a snake. That's a king snake. All right, buddy. He's in the lines and thick mess here. Here, bud. It's not a rattlesnake. That is a speckled king snake. Now, this will be my first ever king snake. We do get easterns where I live, but uh, this is definitely a much prettier, prettier animal. Hey, buddy, you're okay. This is so different than anything I'm used to. He feels 
almost like, uh, it doesn't feel quite as strong as the black rat snakes that I've worked with. But what I happen to know is that king snakes are actually among the strongest constrictors in the world. So I don't know if that's just because of scale or what, but it's really interesting to feel him. I don't know, it's just, he's got a strength to him there. Oh, he's hissing. Hey buddy, you're okay. I'm just checking you out, bud. I'm not, I don't eat snakes. You're fine. Now, you know who does eat snakes? This guy. The reason they're called king snakes, just like king cobras, any snakes that have king in their name are usually snake eaters. And this guy's gonna be out here probably hunting little uh, little venomous snakes like baby uh, baby rattlesnakes, cotton mouths. And the coolest thing about them is they're immune to pit viper venom. So whereas you or me, if we got bit by a pit viper, we'd be in a world of trouble. This guy gets bitten by a copperhead or rattlesnake, he's gonna be just fine. He'll be able to tackle that snake like it's nothing. This guy completely nerfs their venom, which means they are powerless. Hi, you're okay. They are powerless against this snake. And you get a little little love nip there. It wasn't a real bite, almost like a, a warning bite. But uh, generally, king snakes aren't super aggressive and they're non-venomous, so if I did take a bite, it would hurt, but I'd be just fine. Absolutely gorgeous snake, can't believe we got this. Wasn't what we're looking for at all, but uh, nonetheless, a great addition to our adventure. Tell you what, uh. I didn't think looking for a rattlesnake would be this hard. It's hot, bugs are everywhere. I, uh, I've been getting swarmed. Um, but you know what, if we get a big one, it'll all be worth it, it'll all be worth it. Zach's got one last spot. It's like super secret, he won't tell me where it is, so. Uh, I'll you have to be blindfolded to go there. But um, you know what, we're, uh, we're fully embracing everything that happens to get this rattlesnake. I've been swarmed by bugs. I am drenched in sweat from the heat and bugs. And, and now I have to be blindfolded to go to his super secret cane break location. The things I do for videos. Our last location, it's now or never. It's quiet, eerily quiet. The concrete ruins still carry the ghosts of a pre-Katrina era. And as we're hiking through this graveyard, We've got this odd sense that we're being watched. Is it spirits or rattlesnakes? This place is nuts. So much ruins and stuff out here. If I were a rattlesnake, this would be where I'd like to hang out for sure. This place is bound to be crawling with little mammals and lizards and other snakes and stuff. All things that could be food for a big rattlesnake. A lot of them, believe me. Well, that remains to be seen. Hey, 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 got, We've had really bad luck with rattlesnakes got my today. <laughs> I know they're here. That's gonna be beautiful. Follow behind me, so cut down here. Follow yeah. right behind me, very close. Yeah. Big cane break. Where? This thing's gonna rattle like crazy when I pull it out. That's gorgeous. Alrighty, let's get your segment shot. Alright. Wow. Look at that snake. Beautiful. Now this one, I'm not sure if this is one I've seen before. Either way, it's not too happy being messed with, rightfully so. Good rattle, it's going off. And uh, Spencer, I'm gonna show you how to deal with the snake for a little while. There's a sharp learning curve. Yeah. Uh, safety first always. Oh yeah. What you're gonna wanna do is be very aware that this is a heavy, heavy snake. Yeah. Uh, it is very hard to gently handle a cane break rattlesnake, but you're gonna do your best. And uh, typically, this is something you can do. So very similar to other snakes, you can kind of hook them like you a piece of spaghetti. Yep. But uh, with this bigger, heavier snake and this wider hook, you want to kind of grab a little bit more center than you would a typical snake and lift them up to move them. Okay. And they're going to self-balance themselves. Now, he's, he's pretty slow moving. Will, will he stay that way or can no, he get... They can, they can get fast moving very quickly. Okay. He's just being very quick. Since I pulled him out, he's being kind of gentle right now. Okay. And uh, we want to keep it that way. So here's what you're going to do. See how this kind of takes very close look at how I'm hooking this guy. Just like observe every single little one that I do. So it looks to me like you're, you're making sure he kind of crawls over the hook for the most part. I can't 
can, but I can also do that. Yeah. Like twirl him up on it. That's the move that I struggle a lot with with copperheads and moccasins. So and I'm it's even harder on this snake. It's a bigger, fatter yeah. snake. They're very athletic. Don't let their fatness fool you. They're yeah. very athletic. Keep a good distance. They can strike about two thirds of their body length, which for this snake would range from about here to there. AKA, I don't want him getting any closer than about right there. Okay. Safe. And Look at his face. Like, you have like your uh, your cotton mouths, copperheads, that basic, like, almost squared off tip. This guy has those big old nostrils. They got a huge head, big arrow head. And those huge venom glands. You know this guy packs a punch if he bites you. Absolutely. It would kill you. Yeah. Don't worry, I know the nearest hospital with any venom is. So, good <laughs> luck, buddy. I'm going to hand this over to you. So, I'm going to pull him back one more time. Remember what I taught you and uh, give the people accurate information. Otherwise, you're fired. All right. No, I'm, ki I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's a joke. All right. So this is the deadliest snake I'm talking to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very out of my element here. Um, and, you know, co the cottonmouth is fresh in my memory. Copperhead went really well. Uh, spiders went really well. But, you know, cottonmouth is fresh in my memory. And if this if this snake decides not to be cooperative... Um, this is definitely the deadliest snake that we've worked with on this trip so far. This snake is ridiculously heavy. It's probably about a 13 pound snake. Now, you might think, looking at it, they have that chain link looking uh, marking down their back. Absolutely gorgeous. Really, really incredible looking marking on this snake. And this characteristic peeled scale. Like, I would bet, I would never want to touch this guy, but if I, I bet if I touched him, he'd be really rough and like spiky to the touch almost. The way those scales are just standing up off of his body. And uh, it's so weird. On camera, the rattle sounds really, really loud. But in person, it's actually not that insane because sometimes you might just hear it and it, it sounds like leaves or a bunch of brush rattling in the wind. You might not know you're on a rattlesnake until it's absolutely too late. And the thing is, unlike a copperhead, where you'll probably live, a bite from one of these guys will certainly, certainly kill you. The first thing I'm noticing is even compared to the copperhead, which I felt was a fairly easy snake to work with, the rattlesnake's kind of easy. It's slow moving, barely rattling its tail, and seems kind of more content and more fixed on getting back out of the sun and back into its shady little spot where it was coiled up. Sure, you can you can get a mean rattlesnake, but you know, we're I'm staring down probably the deadliest animal that I've ever been in the presence of in my lifetime, and it doesn't have an ounce of aggression in it. Just look at his eyes. The copperhead we filmed recently had these little amber eyes. These guys almost got blue eyes. Like, that's the thing. I wanted to work with these snakes so bad, not only because I need to get better at handling venomous snakes, but I wanted to see just how awesome these guys are in person. And just look at the incredible features of this animal. Like, I don't think it gets any cooler than that here in Louisiana, unless you found a really rare Eastern Diamondback. This guy is a huge, huge, powerful snake. Like Zach was saying, they're very athletic. I can just see on this hook just that this guy's packed with explosive muscle. If I were a little mammal out here at night and I walked upon this guy and didn't see him, he would whack out just like that. Fill my body with venom and I'd be dead in seconds if I was a little mammal. Now, what's probably gonna happen is, now you said these guys are probably one of the most dangerous rattlesnakes in North America regardless because of how common they are. So in the eastern part of the United States, this would be the rattlesnake that you'd want to be most aware of. Yeah. Overall, the western diamondback and the Mojave are definitely worse. You're much more likely to run into this in most areas from a widespread standpoint than you are in eastern diamondback. Now, I'm making sure to keep my distance. He does, sound, he does seem to like want to go around this way. I am in his strike zone if he were to go that way, so I'm going to keep him kind of at a nice distance for me. Fortunately, he stopped rattling. He doesn't seem to be doing any posturing or anything right now. So that's a good sign. That means he's not as defensive. He doesn't feel as threatened as he did when we first disturbed him. But the snake hook doesn't feel quite as foreign. And I, I, I feel confident in hooking and maneuvering this, this animal. This is like a bucket list item for me, you know. I've always wanted to be the kind of adventurer who goes out and works with animals like rattlesnakes, alligators, um, snapping turtles. You know, sitting here and being in control of the situation with a massive rattlesnake, this is what I came to Louisiana to do. I wanted to get hands-on experience with these venomous snakes and work up to a rattlesnake. There were some hiccups, but, but here we are. 
All right, so what you're gonna do for the release okay. is you're gonna hook him that second loop, obviously, and you're gonna put him underneath this slab over here. Over here. Uh, under right, I'm pointing with my yeah. foot right there, that little corner. So like, like that? Yep, just hook him up and lift him. Get him over there quick, because they are heavy. Oh yeah. And then just kind of slip him down there. Just slide him down slowly. Right there. Yep. There you go, buddy. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. And that is how you release a rattlesnake. Very cool. Good job. Cane break rattlesnake. Holy crap. You know, I owe Zach big time for helping me out with these snakes. And this guy is a brilliant animal presenter. Super, super knowledgeable about all kinds of crazy reptiles. His channel's right here if you wanna see all the crazy stuff he's got for you. And if you want to see the deadliest spider I've worked with, that video is right here. I free handled a black widow spider. I hope that I'll see you next Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern for the next adventure. But until then, don't forget to get out there and find your adventure.